everybody. Thanks for joining me. Uh, it's uh, been a little while since I've given you a live update. Let me slide it out of the way here a little bit. Um, but we are going to take a quick look at uh, um, a potential snow and rainstorm for um, this coming Sunday night into Monday. Um, uh, when I first decided to do the live, I haven't gone live in a bit because I've been hectic with COVID stuff um, and everything else that I do, but uh, wanted to go live because yesterday the models were looking really uh, pessimistic towards a potentially significant snowstorm. Thankfully, I mean really thankfully, they seem to have backed off a bit. Um, I think we're going to be just a little too warm to get the uh, to get any kind of heavy snow. Basically, what um, is going to happen is the the heavy a heavy band of precipitation is going to move through on Sunday night, and it looks like now, except for at the very highest elevations, that's going to fall mostly as rain which would be good because that's where the bulk of the precip happens. And then as the storm starts to really develop in the Gulf of Maine, um, we will get, uh, we will change over to snow. But by that point, major accumulations look to be over. So hopefully um, we're not going to see any dramatic uh, accumulations of snow or anything like that. But anyway, um, I did want to give you an update since I had already kind of decided to do that last night. And uh, even though the, the, the weather is looking less significant, thankfully, on Monday than it was a couple of days ago. Um, so a couple things. Um, we're going to give this a try. Uh, I can actually uh, point to stuff now, although it's worse, it's a learning process. So you can see our storm is over the uh, basically uh, Mississippi River Valley here. We're really wrapped up pretty good um, here. Let me slide even a little bit further. Sl uh, wrapped up right here over... Um, uh, Mississippi or over the Mississippi River Valley, right where the uh, uh, Mississippi and the Ohio come together, and um, this storm is basically gonna—it's basically heading east, um, and then a secondary low is gonna form kind of off the coast here uh, and head up into the Gulf of Maine, um, and uh, it's pretty wrapped up, like I said, for this time of year. Um, and uh, if we look at, let's change—we can just take kind of a satellite view. It's very impressive on satellite. Um, This—you uh, can see—you can see a well-defined. Um, system here, upper level system here, um, and a lot of energy. One thing you do notice though is at the moment, even though it does have quite a bit of moisture with it, it is somewhat disconnected from Gulf of uh, Mexico moisture, um, but it still has plenty of moisture. This is uh, this storm has been, uh, is pretty vigorous, and so that's actually pretty impressive radar returns for a storm that doesn't have a connection, a direct connection to the Gulf. Although this time of year also, um, during the winter that would be much more important, but as we head into spring, of course, uh, even though we're not getting a direct connection to the Gulf, there's plenty of warm, moist air here over the southeastern United States. So there's still plenty of moisture getting pushed into the storm, even though it's not kind of a direct tap to the Gulf of Mexico like we'd normally see. And the reason we don't have that direct tap is actually this front, which is a stalled out front from the storm that uh, moved through um, Thursday night into Friday that we just barely missed. Basically, uh, is that front is still sort of cutting off the, the main piece of moisture from getting involved in this storm, or um, which is ultimately a good thing because that would certainly add to the potential for at least heavier precipitation. Um, so with that in mind, let's look at temperatures because they kind of tell the real story here. This is a look at the wider um, North America here. And you can see way up here in Canada, we do have one thing we have lacked all winter long for snowstorms that we do have in place for this storm is a high pressure system, a pretty strong high pressure system located right here over Quebec. That is exactly what we normally need for, uh, for bigger snowstorms. Again, if this storm was happening three weeks ago, we would definitely be getting snow in a big snowstorm. Um, but uh, what's, so what happens, why you need the high pressure system here is, uh, the high locks in here and it does two things. The first thing it does is it keeps the storm uh, it helps slow the progression of the storm out into the North Atlantic, which this storm is going to slow down. Um, it's basically not going to move a lot once it gets just off the coast of, uh, of um, Cape Cod, and it's uh, over about a 12-hour period, which kind of keeps us in the potential for heavy precipitation band. But what happens, uh, the other thing that a high pressure there does is the, the, the moisture wraps kind of in a, in a clockwise flow around us and it funnels cold air down into the northern part of the storm to keep us cold. It locks in the cold. Um, we haven't had that, that, that high pressure system in place all winter. That's why we never really had, one of the reasons, there was lots of reasons, but that's one of the reasons we didn't really have coastal storms this winter. Um, this storm, like I said, middle of the winter, this is a, pretty much a classic um, one of the two or three classic type storm tracks that we have for a big snowstorm. Again, thankfully we're late in the season and so it looks like the snow is going to fall mostly as mixed precipitation. Um, 
one more quick look, just a, uh, another look at this system. Oop, my uh, screen is kind of, it's uh, interacting with this not that greatly. But anyway, um, you can see, it, again, this is a really impressive upper level uh, piece, of, piece of strong storm energy. Um, I want to go to the summary to kind of talk about what uh, this means, because ultimately that's uh, what's really important here. Um, rain and snow are going to start uh, Sunday night and continue through the through Monday evening. Like I said, we're probably almost all going to start as rain, except for the very highest elevations. I mean, um, if you want to if you want to hike to the top of Stratton or Bromley or any of the other peaks around here, if you get over three thousand feet, um, we may start as snow up there and easily at three 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 thousand feet to thirty five hundred feet. Wouldn't be surprised to see six to ten inches of snow up that high but that's just going to be way up it's above where any of the roads are it's not really a problem um although the, the tops of the mountains will be all white on uh on tuesday when it, when the sun when they get out of the clouds finally you'll be able to look up and see they're all white um but the snow levels will creep down throughout the day um and there's two things kind of working for us um one as the storm tries to wrap in that co coldest of air it is going to be uh, that'll be happening during the day. And we have strong April sunshine above those clouds trying to warm the atmosphere. We're almost into May now, so really strong uh, sun, which will help to kind of counteract the storm. Um, and also the heaviest precipitation will have already kind of moved through at this point. And uh, often what you need to get snow, accumulating snow this late in the season is you need extremely heavy precipitation and often it needs to happen at night. Um, and you need elevation. So uh, we only have one of those three things here on this storm. The elevation's still there, obviously. There's still plenty of hills and mountains around here. But um, we'll be during the day. And so, yes, the snow levels will come down, but it's going to be warm. We'll probably still be 35 to 37 degrees at the surfaces. Even at 1,500 feet, we'll probably be 37 degree, 35 degrees at least. It makes the snow hard to accumulate. And um, so I think it'll be snowing in the air probably even by morning. Um, at 1500 feet and we will get a little accumulation there um, and then it will eventually change to snow probably for just about all of us as the storm really wraps up uh, on Monday afternoon but again most of that won't accumulate anywhere um, we'll probably get a, a slushy coating on the grassy surfaces um, basically by Monday afternoon heaviest precipitation like I said looks to fall as rain but above 1500 feet there's going to be some accumulation uh, a general accumulation map above 2,000 feet we're looking at three to five inches of snow at around 1,500 feet, one to three inches of snow, and anything above 750 feet. So basically, unless you're right down in the Connecticut River Valley um, or you're down in Bennington, you'll probably see at least a coating on the grass for Tuesday morning. It will melt by noon on Tuesday for most of us. But um, And it looks to be mostly nuisance. Um, we're close, though. So like, if we're just a degree or two colder, so I'll keep an eye on it for you. If we're just a degree or two colder, um, we'll get a little bit more snow and of course this this time of year snow it can be if we got if we got a decent snowstorm or fall it would not be good because it would be heavy and wet and we, we could have significant power issues I don't think that's a problem at all with looking at the current information the temperatures in Canada that we're looking at with and the high pressure system it's strong but it's also not there's not I mean it's cold for this time of year but it's still late April cold up there, you know, uh, teens and 20s in uh, in Canada, not sub-zero weather to push down real cold air as the storm wraps up. So don't think power is going to be a problem at this point, but it definitely bears watching. And that's what, yesterday some of the models looked real cold, quite a bit, a couple degrees colder than they did today. It was looking kind of ominous um, for power. So I don't think that's going to be a big problem. Uh, roads shouldn't be a problem either. This is the kind of snow that will almost, you know, the roads are going to be warm. It's 60 degrees out today. The roads are going to be quite warm. Uh, snow is not really going to stick to the roads. They'll mostly just be wet, except for at the very highest places. Again, if you're up uh, driving over the mountain uh, to Manchester, if you're uh, at Bromley on Route 11, could be a little slick there. And, you know, certainly going over Route 9, that's always um, a kind of a treacherous spot down there as well. But otherwise, for the most part, uh, road should be fine um, and everything should melt except for at those very highest elevations by Tuesday at noon and hopefully the cold weather pattern looks to break um, probably not next week but maybe the week after that um, we've just been really locked in for about almost a month now for about five four four and a half weeks here on this cold um, trough pattern in the east um, that we didn't have all winter, but now we have it when we don't really want it. So hopefully that'll break. And the nice thing about that is um, if it does break and we get into normal or even above, slightly above average uh, May temperatures, it'll go from feeling like it's winter still and, it, and with highs in the 40s a lot of times to we could easily have lots of days in the 60s and 70s within a couple of weeks. Um, no guarantees on that, but that's uh, hopefully what will happen um, as I'm sure you're all getting a little sick of the weather we're currently facing. 
So, again, thanks for joining uh, me today. Um, I will uh, post, probably I'll go live again tomorrow afternoon, but I'll let you know if I'm going to do that on the Facebook page. Hope everybody's staying safe, staying healthy, and uh, we'll see you again real soon.